Hello and welcome to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven and this is my 2007 Ford Fusion, my first Copart salvage car rebuild project. In the last episode, we got the bumper crash bar put on and we pulled out the new radiator core support, uh, but I ran out of daylight and uh, so I had to put it off. Uh, we have a little bit of a break in the weather here in Indiana. Today it's a little over 50 degrees. Tomorrow it's supposed to be um, in the 60s. Here in January, that's uh, crazy. Uh, but Friday, uh, it's all going to go south. We're going to get, uh, they're saying, a bunch of snow. It's going to get all cold again. So I want to get some work done on the car while I can. So today, we're going to go ahead and put the radiator core support in. At least that's the plan. And I'm going to have to start by pulling some of the mounting hardware off the old broken one. Let's get started. I have been gathering up all the pieces of the old core support. It's in a lot of pieces. And uh, taking off all the various things that were attached to the old core support and then attaching them to the new one. Uh, that way there's no hunting and trying to figure out how things go together later. Uh, I have saved every single shard of plastic or metal that fell off this car just in case there's anything attached to it. Uh, that is a top tip for you. If you are uh, doing one of these rebuilds, don't throw anything away until you are done with the project because you never know what little seemingly insignificant thing um, you could throw away and end up needing and then have to go find. So anyway, uh, I've been pulling things off of the old one and attaching to the new one, and I'm just about ready now to attach this to the car. I also pulled out this piece that I had to order. Uh, this is a, well, I think Ford just calls it a support, but it's basically uh, a cross piece that attaches to uh, the core support here that the hood latch uh, assembly bolts onto, as well as the front crash sensor attaches to. Uh, this actually kind of gets sandwiched in between the core support and um, the bumper crash bar uh, mounting brackets. So I need to put this on at the same time. Now I'm ready to start putting all these parts in the car. All right, well, I've got the radiator core support in, along with this uh, support bracket that holds the uh, hood latch and the crash sensor. I don't have the core support completely attached. I've left it unattached up here uh, where the uh, fender mounts, uh, where it attaches to the fender mounts, uh, but I have it in there. Uh, more or less where it goes, it may need a little tweaking uh, and adjusting, but it's pretty close. So, it's starting to look like a car again. Now that this is in, the next step is going to be to put the um, air, AC condenser, the radiator, and the radiator fan assembly all in here. And, uh, and at that point, once I have all those lines hooked up and all my fluids topped back off, I can actually safely uh, go ahead and start the car again and maybe even take it for a test drive. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I have somewhere to be here in just a few minutes, so I'm going to have to quit for today. I got a little bit done. Hopefully tomorrow morning, I can take advantage of the nice weather and get uh, the uh, AC condenser, the radiator, and the radiator fan assembly in and uh, top off my fluids, button up all the hoses and lines. And if I can get that much done tomorrow before the cold and all of the snow comes in, I'll be happy. So I'll touch base with you tomorrow. All right, it's the next day. And uh, as you can see, I'm in a t-shirt. It is unbelievably warm for January. It is supposed to be well into the 60s today. Uh, it's about 60 right now, um, which is amazing considering just one week ago it was way, way below zero out here. Um, anyway, I have just a couple of hours before I have to be gone, so I'm going to try to get some more work done on the car. My goal today is to try to get uh, the radiator, the AC condenser, and the radiator fan installed, all the lines hooked up and fluids filled back up uh, because if I'm able to do all of that, uh, then I will be uh, able to actually start the car without losing fluids and maybe even take it for a test drive, which I have not done yet. 
So that's my goal today. I have to start by uh, finishing um, getting the core support uh, attached. And uh, once I've done that, then I can start putting everything together and uh, I'll bring you along for it. Let's get started. All right, I've got the core support buttoned down to the uh, fender. Uh, well, I don't know what the technical term for that is there, but where the fenders attach uh, on both sides. So I've got uh, all of that fastened and tightened. The core support is permanent. And then uh, what I've done now is I've run uh, the, uh, the, the cable for the hood latch release, as well as some wiring through that goes to the um, crash sensor in the front. Uh, I probably will still be replacing that, but I needed to make sure that the wiring came through the right places uh, so that uh, I don't block myself out once I get um, the condenser and the radiator installed. So with that stuff in place, uh, I'm ready to go ahead and start uh, test fitting the condenser and the radiator. Um, all of my hard lines and hoses uh, are in place uh, but loose, and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and attach the condenser to the radiator before I put it in the car. I hope that's the right approach. And then uh, once it's in place, then I'll have to go ahead and attach everything. So uh, that's what I'm gonna get started on now. Check back with you soon. All right, so here is the radiator condenser and fan assembly that came out of the car. And uh, the way they have set this up is kind of neat, really. Uh, everything's kind of modular and uh, is designed to kind of all just attach to each other. So this condenser here in the front um, clips onto the front side of the um, radiator. So I've got these four clips. Uh, actually, the bottom ones are just kind of support uh, slots, and then the top here uh, is where they actually clip in. And so the condenser becomes basically one piece with uh, the radiator. Then on the other side, you have uh, the fan assembly which sort of kind of does the same thing. It slots into uh, a couple of clips on the back side of the radiator and then is released uh, with these little uh, buttons right here. Sorry, that's a little bit out of focus, but it's released with these. Uh, so technically, this is all one assembly once it's uh, installed in the car. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, attach my con new condenser to the radiator and install that into the car uh, as one unit um, and for the sake of space I'm going to leave the fan assembly off uh, until I'm ready to or until I have uh, the uh, condenser and radiator installed because um, I do not think that I'm going to be able to get all three parts together as one unit in this slot but I think I can probably get the two as long as I'm careful so uh, before I can get started um, I'm going to need to take a couple more pieces off of this old one um, I need this hose here, which goes to my power steering fluid reservoir. And then I've got uh, a couple of rubber feet down on the bottom um, that uh, will go uh, into the supports or the bottom supports on the radiator core support and one on the top. One of them is actually already uh, in the car. So um, that is what I'm going to work on now. And uh, then I'll be able to take those parts, install them on my new ones. This is the condenser. This is the radiator. Uh, those are both new aftermarket parts. And then uh, this is the fan uh, and fan motor assembly. Um, this is a used part I got off of eBay, crossing my fingers that hopefully that'll work just fine um, because I obviously haven't been able to test it yet. But uh, uh, those are very, very expensive. And uh, for the sake of price, I went ahead and bought a used one. I did look for one in the um, salvage yard, but those are all either broken or already taken. So hot commodity, when these cars are in a front crash, that is something that tends to uh, just be destroyed right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking the parts off of the old one, and then I'll get these connected to each other, and uh, I'll check back in with you soon. All right, got all the parts I need, as far as I know, off of the old uh, radiator and condenser. Uh, but I wanted to show you something. In case you're working on uh, one of these fusions, this is for the 2006 to 2009 body style. And I believe this actually would still be true for the 2010 through 2012s. Don't hold me to that. 
Um, but in case you're doing uh, a radiator or can, and or condenser swap on one of these, I wanted to show you something that I learned in the process. So when I was taking all of the parts uh, off of my old broken uh, core support and installing them on the new core support, I came across these clips here that I had no idea what in the world they did. I'm sorry that's not focusing on it, uh, but I had no idea what these clips did. And um, they slot in here uh, from behind and then they clip in right there. Well, as soon as I started taking this uh, old radiator and condenser apart, I realized exactly what they do. Those uh, attach to the top mounts on the uh, radiator. And this one's actually broken off, but you can see it over here. This is the top mounting point on the radiator. Um, this rubber piece on the bottom uh, slots on top of that, and then it slots once uh, you put it into the bottom of the core support, then you'll lift it back or toward the front, and that will clip in here uh, right into these little clips. So that is what those are for, and in order to get them out, uh, you'll just lift up on these two little tabs here, and that whole piece will slot out. Probably be a little bit easier, actually, uh, once they are attached to uh, the actual radiator. So that's what those are for. I also took off uh, the rubber feet um, for the radiator, and then I also took off that uh, power steering fluid line I attached it to the bottom of the reservoir, and uh, now it's ready to be attached to uh, the new uh, condenser once that's installed in the car. So, next step is to go ahead and unpackage the new condenser and radiator, attach them to each other, and then uh, put on uh, these mounts and then uh, it's time to put it in the car. Wish me luck. All right, got the condenser mounted to uh, the radiator that was actually a little bit trickier than I thought it was going to be. Um, if these were both genuine Ford parts, they probably would have gone together just fine. But if you've ever worked on cars and used aftermarket parts, you know they're not always a perfect fit. So uh, I did get them together. I'm pretty sure I didn't damage anything. <laughs> and um, now I'm ready to put the mounts on the top and bottom and actually attempt to uh, slide these into the car without damaging them. So let's get started. All right, I'm out of time. I have to get going to another appointment. Uh, so I'm gonna have to be done for now. I did get the radiator and condenser in there and I got the AC lines connected and power steering lines connected. Still need to hook up uh, all the radiator lines and um, a few other little odds and ends and then put in the radiator fan. So I didn't get quite as far as I was hoping. Ran into a few little things which are mostly because of my ignorance. Because the car came apart in pieces, I never actually saw how it was originally installed. So I'm kind of learning as I go. So. I've got to pack up and run to my errand. Hopefully I get done soon enough that I can come back out here and uh, do a little bit more this afternoon. And um, I would love to start this car today and uh, even take it for a drive maybe. So I'll touch base with you when I'm able to get back to the car. All right, made it back from my appointment. That took a little longer than I was hoping for. But um, anyway, I'm back. I don't have a ton of daylight left but I've got a little bit of time. So I am gonna to try to finish buttoning up the, uh, the radiator and condenser and fan and power steering lines and all that stuff and seal off those systems, top off fluids, and hopefully be able to actually start this car uh, very shortly. So let's go ahead and get started with what daylight we have left.
that's gonna have to be it for today. It's starting to get dark, it's raining, and I ran into a couple of snags. Uh, first of all, after I recorded this video, I realized that what I was calling the lower power steering lines are actually the transmission cooler lines. Lines run from the transmission to the radiator, through the radiator, and then back to the transmission uh, to cool the transmission fluid. So, they are not power steering lines. They are, in fact, transmission fluid cooler lines. Sorry for the mistake. Back to the video. I also wasn't, um, wasn't able to find distilled water uh, to put in the radiator along with my coolant. I know that's a really weird thing to not be able to find, despite the fact that it's 50 some odd degrees right now and raining. Tonight, the temperature's supposed to drop and we're supposed to be getting a winter storm. Uh, they were calling for a truckload of snow. Now they're calling more for ice and then a few inches of snow. In any case, people panic, and I don't know why they're buying up all the distilled water, but the rack was empty. A few other places I can try, but I didn't have time um, before I got home, so I'm going to have to try again for distilled water. So I can't put in power steering fluid. I cannot put in water with my coolant, uh, so I can't fill up the radiators. So I've gone about as far as I can go. As you can see, I've got a hood on there. I replaced my hood latches, and or hinges, excuse me, I replaced the hood hinges. And then I replaced the hood with a hood I got from a junkyard. It is the wrong color. It's red. It'll get painted at some point. Uh, but right now it's better than laying the dented one on there, which is what I had been doing. It wasn't even just dented. It was like folded in half. So this is better than that. Uh, ran into a little snag putting the, the uh, hood latch on there. Uh, not so much mounting it, but uh, where the cable attaches. I'm going to have to uh, figure out exactly how that goes together. So I didn't want to put that on until I figured all that out. Uh, so, I've probably gone about as far as I can go today. I wanted to start it, I wanted to drive it, but I'm not going to rush this job. I'll get there. So, at this point, I'm soaking wet. I've gone about as far as I can go. It's getting dark, so I'm going to have to call it quits here. In the next episode, hopefully we'll be able to get all of the things we need to finish putting this uh, back together as far as the um, power steering hard lines, my distilled water, uh, and figure out this hood latch thing. Uh, but I'll get all of that figured out. Then I'll be able to put in the radiator fan and uh, actually be able to start the thing. So, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Thank you for those of you who have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed already, why don't you go ahead and do that now and then go ahead and hit that bell icon so that when I upload new videos, you can be notified uh, that I've uploaded. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go in and dry off. We'll catch you in the next episode.